Good morning, everyone. My name is Paul Fernandez, and I'm here to present my article on, on article, which is evolutionary latent space exploration of generative adversarial networks. Uh, I'm a student in the second year of master's degree, my master's degree in informatics engineering at the University of Greenberg. Uh, for starters, I'd like to give a little bit of context on this article and on this article and where it is inserted. Uh, this article is artic uh, actually inserted in part of my work uh, for my dissertation, and I'm going to talk a bit, a bit about that. Uh, machine learning models are dependent on training data sets in order to learn and understand underlying patterns for performing certain tasks, such as, for example, for example distinguishing cats from dogs. And as such, the quality of the data sets will greatly influence the performance of the models trained. Uh, the objective of my dissertation is the improvement of the performance of image classifiers by performing data augmentation on the training data sets by tackling the issues of representativeness, which is the glass balance, and the completeness, which is the coverage of the solution space for each, for each class. Uh, in order to perform data augmentation, we will specifically uh, use generative adversarial networks. These are machine learning models that produce gener uh, synthetic images uh, similar to those of the original data sets. We are looking into the hypothesis that adding a number of these synthetic images to the original data set could improve its quality. Although we also recognize that adding random images could easily undermine the results. As such, we also need a supervisor uh, that controls which images are, will be added to the original the data set for the, the training of the classifiers. And this is the part where this work comes in. Uh, so, also, I uh, want to talk about a bit about how GAN's work. Again, is a model composed uh, by a discriminator and a generator. And the discriminator learns how to distinguish real from fake images. And the generator uh, learns how to generate images that uh, trick the discriminator and learns from, uh, from its feedback. The generator has an input uh, of random vectors, which are uh, usually from a high dimensional space, which are, is called the latent space, which initially has no real meaning, but will gain meaning as the generator is trained. Uh, the advantages of generative adversarial networks are the possibility of generating innumerable number, an innumerable number of images and the generation of images that were not present in the, in the initial data set and that contain characteristics, uh, mixed characteristics from different images of, of the original data set. Uh, initially, we train uh, some generative adversarial networks to see how they would perform. We can see with that, uh, with NIST and Fashion NIST, which are data sets that have a lower complexity the GANs uh, could, uh, were able to, uh, to generate good images and uh, satisfactory images, but with the fact CT data set due to its complexity, we didn't have uh, as good results and and the images are a bit flawed. Uh, maybe with uh, uh, a bit more training time, it, this could be this could be uh, arranged. Uh, so uh, I want to talk a bit first about why um, exploring the latent space uh, is an interesting idea. Uh, it's because, uh, as I said before, the generative models, the generator. Uh, generates images from a vector of from the latent space. So if we can uh, if we can understand the pattern that uh, the patterns that exist in the latent space of the generator and the and uh, how how these patterns generate different images, we can take we can uh, take that into account in order to uh, generate images that uh, 
uh, that follow a certain criteria. The, the exploration of the latent space is not a well uh, known idea. It's still, it's still not, uh, there are not many works uh, researching this idea, but there are already some. For instance, one of these uh, uses the latent space exploration to build worlds for uh, build maps for the Mario video game. Another example uses evolutionary computation for generating master prints, which are um, uh, prints that uh, fingerprints that can open more than one single lock. And others show that the exploration of latent space can find interpolations between images from the original data sets and also the application of analogies like the king ma minus man plus woman equals queen. Uh, that is shown in this uh, J graph. Uh, the, the bottom right image is the result of the, bottom, uh, the top, uh, top right images added with the left bottom image uh, subtracted, uh, subtracting the uh, top left image. Uh, the objective uh, is to use an evolutionary computation engine to generate sets of images that follow certain criteria. Uh, each individual corresponds to a set of images which, uh, which is encoded in, in its genotype in a number of latent space vectors. Uh, through, the, through the GANs, the genotypes are converted into the phenotype, which corresponds to a set of images. These sets are then evaluated through a fitness function, and finally the variation operators are applied to generate new individuals. Uh, it's, uh, uh, all algorithms start from a pool of individuals, a random pool of individuals, that uh, through several iterations are going to be changed on time in order to find the, the best individual, the best image set that follows the criteria that we want. Uh, in order to test our, our hypothesis, we use three different, different algorithms. First, the random sampling, with the, which is the baseline. Uh, as a pool size of one, only one single, uh, we, we work we work with only one single individual at a time, and at each each iteration, a new individual is is generated and is tested. The second algorithm was a genetic algorithm, which which works with a fixed pool of individuals, at uh, and at which each iteration, the pool of individuals, the previous pool of individuals, is used to generate a new pool of individuals using the recombination. Uh, uh, the combination, recombination, uh, well, a word is the, the new uh, the pool of individuals is used to uh, generate a new pool of individuals using crossover and mutation. The last uh, uh, algorithm is multi uh, was the multi-dimensional archive phenotypic elites, uh, or, or for shortest, map elites. This is a new, uh, it's a, red, a relative recent uh, algorithm. It's an illumination algorithm. The objective is to explore the search space as much as possible. It builds an archive that maps phenotypes of individuals to certain func functions or criteria. The space is, is divided into, into several cells, where at each one is kept best, the best corresponding individual. It starts by building, uh, the, the, the initial pool is bu built, um, uh, the initial pool is built using random individual, uh, random generation. And at each iteration, a new individual is generated by combining uh, two individuals from uh, two, uh, two random cells in the, in the archive, also uh, using crossover, and also use mutation to perform uh, some other changes. Uh, the size of the archive uh, 
actually grows whenever a new individual is mapped into a cell that is not already present in the archive. Uh, we also uh, also want to note that we try to uh, balance the 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 three algorithms uh, by trying to generate the same number of ind new individuals in each algorithm. Uh, in this work specifically, we wanted to maximize diversity and for, uh, for such, we used a, a fitness function with, which was average sim similarity. In this specific, uh, specific case, since we were measuring similarity, we wanted actually to minimize uh, the value. Uh, how does this, uh, this function work? Uh, we uh, for which uh, for each combination of two images in a set of images we measure the similarity and afterwards in the end uh, we take the averages from from every measured similarity uh, for me uh, measuring the similarity we use two different uh, metrics normalized cross correlation a root mean squared error to explore the latent space uh, we carry we carry the experiments in the three data sets that we also tested the the, the generative versatile networks in the beginning uh, by by analyzing the graphs we can see that uh, the random and, and the map elites didn't have uh, much success in minimizing the similarity and didn't change the values and that shows even more in the most complex uh, data sets. Uh, the fashion, uh, the MNIST is, is the one that uh, we can, we were more able to lower uh, the, uh, the, the value, the, the, the objective. And the facility data set, we were not able to, to lower as much. And as we can also see, the map elites is almost as equal as the random solution, uh, which is probably due to the, the mapping functions which were chosen. Uh, but uh, the actually the generative the genetic algorithm was able to to minimize the to reach the objective. Uh, or to achieve better results than the other two and uh, was able to uh, generate sets of individuals that were better for our, uh, for our criteria. Uh, this is a heat map that shows the work of the map elites. Uh, the, uh, the space mapping was performed through a mean similarity x in the x-axis and the maximum similarity in the y-axis, both from zero to one. The heat maps showed the space exploration on, along the iterations zero, uh, 12,000 uh, 12, and 25,000. As you can verify, uh, the algorithm was not able to perform a good search across the space, especially in the most complex data set facility which compri uh, compromises its success. And the facility, the structure of the images is very similar. So the metrics, mainly the NCC, the normalized cross correlation, had great difficulties in creating uh, diverse groups and separating them into, in, into the map. Uh, the choice of mapping functions, as we can see, was probably the why the this algorithm did not work. Uh, here we can see the best individuals for each algorithm and for each met, uh, metric. Uh, while the in NCC promotes uh, more contrasts in the images, 
as we can see. We can see that, for example, in the facility, we can see it better um, that uh, the skin color is much more different and much more diverse. Uh, if we look mostly to the genetic algorithm, it is much more diverse than the RMSA. Uh, but uh, the RMSA promotes the minimization of element overlap and dissimilar backgrounds, while the NCC is not as much. Uh, and this is this is it. Thank you for your time. Any questions? Okay, Paul. Thanks for for your presentation. Do we have questions? Yes, no, don't be shy. Well, we have a question for, for Mark. Uh, what's your conclusion? Uh, this, uh, uh, this it was just uh, a part of the, the work in, our, in my dissertation. So it's, we, we, this, we did not reach a conclusion uh, yet. Uh, I mean, this is something it's, uh, how can I say it? It's preliminary work. It's, it's, it's a step for reaching a conclusion and that conclusion will be, was supposed to be reached in the, in the end of the, of my dissertation. So I don't think I can give you an answer for this though. Uh, I could try to uh, Okay, I guess I'm uh, not there. Do yeah, you have more uh, questions? I don't know. <laughs> no? So let me thank our speaker again, Paul. Thanks mm -hmm. for for your talk.